Welcome back to Five Acres Sunny Farm. I'm Tara Lynn, and today I am going to share with you um, a few ways that help me save some time when I am doing an oxalic acid treatment on my hives. So I um, have been using oxalic acid treatments um, ever since I started beekeeping. Um, if you're not familiar with them, it's a non-chemical uh, method of helping to control uh, varroa mites. And oxalic acid is an organic compound. The oxalic acid uh, treatment that I use is a vaporization treatment, which is kind of an incorrect term because it's actually sublimation is what is actually happening, but uh, it's just commonly referred to as uh, vaporization. And I have um, a fairly popular video on the kind of DIY power supply that my husband made for the vaporizer so that I can just plug it in. I don't have to run off of a battery. And I just recently did a follow-up video to that where we really look inside that power supply because a lot of people had questions about it. Right now it's early to mid-November and I just did the oxalic acid treatment early this morning, just uh, around sunrise. And uh, this is typically like the last time of um, the year that I'll do a treatment. Uh, I typically just do um, two treatments a year unless I see uh, varroa counts or um, if I get a swarm and I want to treat the swarm before there's brood. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details about like how to use the vaporizer and the um, amount of oxalic acid to put into the tray and all of that. Um, of course, please read the instructions. There are federal guidelines for how you want to be using um, and treating the, the colonies with oxalic acid. So read the manufacturer's instructions and follow them. Uh, I, um, I will share um, a few things that I do before I go out to the apiary is that I will um, typically the night before, so two things to keep in mind are that you um, don't really have a temperature restriction at all for using um, the vaporizer. I mean, I wouldn't say sub-zero temperatures would be ideal, but um, but one of the things we struggle with here in the South um, is that a lot of the um, other organic treatments uh, require lower temperatures. So in the summer, it's really impossible to use it because it's just too hot. Um, so that's some of the nice things about oxalic acid is that I can use it at any time of the year. Uh, and then the most effective time to use it is when there's no brood. And um, I prefer to do a treatment first thing in the morning. Um, that's when you have the majority of the bees in the colony so that you can get everyone treated at the same time. Uh, so some folks like to treat like right at sunset. I haven't tried that before, but I find that some of the bees are still kind of foraging just after sunset. And um, I like that by doing it just at sunrise, like it's kind of dark out, but it's getting lighter. So it's becoming like easier to like see things and to manage stuff. And if you have uh, several colonies, then you're going to be spending um, some time out there, even though each each hive only takes about five minutes total um, to treat. So, um, you know, if you've got a few, you know, you've got five hives like I have, um, I only treated three today. Um, you know, that, that sounds like it's only gonna take 15 minutes, but when you add up the prep time and then getting the equipment transferred between the colonies, um, it all adds up. So like this morning took me about 45 minutes, um, a little bit under that actually, um, because I did the prep work. So I typically will go out and if there's no like rain in the forecast, then I will put um, a dish towel on each hive. And I use that to block the hive entrance um, while the vaporizer is in the hive entrance. Um, but I'll, I'll make sure that those towels are out there. I make sure I have a bucket of water out there um, and I have a bowl that I use that I'll fill up the water so that way I have like some water to put the actual um, vaporizer wand in once the treatment is done because you want to cool it down um, and then I have extra water in case there's a fire um, and on the note of fire I put a fire extinguisher out in the apiary um, while I'm doing the treatment. I just take the one that we keep in our kitchen and I just leave it out there um, for the time that I'm treating um, the colonies. And the reason for that is that um, I really encourage you to read some horror stories of folks who have inappropriately um, used the oxalic acid um, vaporizer or have had accidents happen 
um, and it's it's an acid, you know, so like you don't want to um, to really make any errors. It's very unforgiving. Um, and, um, you know, if you're not using it properly, you could, um, you know, permanently damage your vision, have respiratory problems, um, skin, you know, damage and stuff. Um, so really do your due diligence um, and be careful. Also keep in mind that beeswax is highly flammable. So when you're putting in this wand that's heating up very, very hot in the colony, there is a risk that maybe the, the bees have built some burr comb down and that wax might be touching the wand and it could ignite and then you have a big problem. So that's why I like to have the water around and the fire extinguisher. And as you'll see in the apiary right now, it's fall, so there's leaves everywhere. So that is also a fire hazard too. Um, so just really be cognizant about what your environment has um, in it and, and how you can kind of prepare for that. Typically when I um, inspect the hives, like I know when the next oxalic acid treatment is going to be. So I'll check all of the bottom frames to make sure there's no extra burr comb down there. And if there is, I'll scrape it off or I'll move the frame to a higher um, spot in the hive so that it's not close to that wand. Um, the other thing that I do is I make sure that all of the inner covers um, that they're all closed and at this time of the year, not really like the summer, but at this time of the year I already have them closed because that's one of the um, methods that I do to help prevent robbing during this really sensitive time of the year. So that's already done and because the temperatures have already started to cool off, all of my screened bottom boards, um, I have an IPM board in there. So you want to have as tight a seal as possible so that the vapor um, can um, remain in the hive and do its work. So by having the inner cover um, closed and having the IPM board in, or if you use a solid bottom board, that's great. And then I have that dish towel that I'll be putting in the entrance. Um, that's pretty much as tight a seal as you really need for it. Right. Sunrise is a few minutes away and I've got two nukes on the end there that I will explain more about shortly. Um, but my three hives here, fortunately, are all about the same size, approximately the same type of population. So I've got all my setup here with the water, the bowl, the um, power supply. I've got all the towels set up on, on each of them. So that way I can just kind of make it an assembly line system. Um, extension cord runs that way and that fire extinguisher that um, just have just in case um, something might go wrong. But i um, got the wand here i just am about to swap off the inner cover because there is a feeder that i haven't been using on this colony i have the wand inside with the oxalic acid the towel has sealed it up I'm heading over to the power supply to start the first treatment and now setting the timer for two and a half minutes stand about this far away usually and um, it's wise to light a smoker to see where downwind is. Um, I, I had personally don't do that but it is recommended um, but you can kind of see how um, it kind of seeps out a little bit here but I just walk over turn that off and I am wearing a, um, a mask and I'm wearing eye protection as well. As of this filming the recommended use is that once you are done treating um, that you are sealing up the hive for 10 minutes. So I still have um, the towel in there and now I'm gonna be moving um, along to start the next colony. And um, got the towel ready here and got the wand already set up. Hopefully the next one will be just as drama free. This is a queen in one of those nukes that I'll share more about, but it looks like the bees have accepted her and uh, stay tuned for more about that one. I am done with the treatments, which is great. So in my next video, I'll share an update about those two little nukes. And I am now going to make some sugar bricks. I am linking the recipe for that so that I can get these hives prepped for the cold weather that's coming. So stay tuned.